This video is sponsored by Puritan. Xi Jinping officially launches his executioner squad, and this comes as Xi's return to Mao Zedong is near its full end, and China under the CCP is going back to where it began, poor, hungry, and a whole lot of class struggles. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. In 1962, Mao Zedong announced, for the dictatorship of the entire anti-political movement class, we must rely on the masses and the party. Implementing dictatorship over the anti-movement class does not mean eliminating all anti-movement class elements, but rather transforming them and using appropriate methods to transform them into new people. Mao that same year went on to put out a slogan, never forget to class struggle. Xi Jinping is wasting no time to accelerate or decelerate the country backwards to the Mao Zedong era. Even if his last name is Xi, he's more like a spiritual son of Mao. And this is a photo taken from a recent meeting for the Maple Bridge Experience or Feng Chao Experience. Uh, no, it doesn't actually have anything to do with maple leaves or bridges. It's actually the event that marked the beginning of people against people political struggle sessions in China. In that time period, people were labeled four kinds, landowners, rich farmers, anti-revolutionaries, and bad persons. Now, the so-called Maple Bridge experience came in 1963, three years before the Cultural Revolution was launched in China. So why would Xi Jinping go back to that? Well, the simple truth is that he's long wanted to do this. Uh, even back in 2002, when she was just in Zhejiang as a uh, local official, he went to the town of Fengqiao, or Maple Bridge Town, to commemorate this event. He's always longed for the Cultural Revolution, I guess. Now, he's in a political state where the existing government system no longer fits what he wants. So instead of firing a bunch of people, he's set up shop outside of the law. Much like in the 60s where Mao ruled on this so-called people's policy rather than state laws and legal frameworks, Xi Jinping now wants to use so-called people's leadership, aka himself, as the new paramount power and status. In other words, Xi Jinping is recreating a state of China where the rule of law and the existing structure of the government, the party, do not matter anymore. What would he do instead? Well, this is the watershed moment for China. The core characteristic of the past 40 years has been the reform and opening up. And that is based on the abandonment of class struggle, which was Mao's stuff, right? But we're now moving away from reform and opening up, and we're going back to class struggle. Before we continue, let me introduce to you my sponsor today. Now, if there is one supplement you want to incorporate into your diet, it's a good omega-3 supplement. It's the best all-around defender of your health. It reduces inflammation, reduces cholesterol level, improves eyesight, and reduces risk for heart problems, as well as help with joint pain, among other great benefits. Today, I want to introduce you to Paratown's green vegetables. Paratown gets their ingredients directly from the high mountains of South Korea. The omega oils are extracted from purslane and perilla seeds. It's 100% vegan. Personally, I've been using omega-3 supplements for nine years now, and I recently switched to Paratown. Here's why. We mostly get our omegas from fish, but that may not be possible for everyone. First of all, there's the aftertaste, not suitable for vegetarians either. And often the most important part is the concentration of the omegas. Now, Periton soft gels have a much higher content for omega-3, 6, 7, and 9 than many of the other brands out there. And some say that they notice less hair loss, a lower cholesterol level, and overall improved health. Other brands often use high heat to extract the oil, which in turn creates a lot of harmful byproducts. Puritan's green vegetable is done using a patented method of supercritical carbon dioxide low temperature extraction, so it preserves the natural properties and maintains high purities. First of its kind. So get yourself some or as a gift for your loved ones today. Using my code DZ2023, you can receive free shipping worldwide. Check out the link in the description and comment below today. So to understand it, we have to talk about the core of the Maple Bridge experience. Now, in a nutshell, it's basically to move the power from state law enforcement and state administrative agencies to grassroots mass organizations. So the leaders of said grassroots social organizations have the power of administrative discretion and legal adjudication. So all disputes among the public or the masses are no longer handled by the government and do not need to go through the legal system either. People simply can deal with problems themselves. What impacts does actually the Maple Bridge bring is that it has a lateral shift in the overall contradiction of the country. The reason why this Maple Bridge experience is mentioned again this time is simply because the national economy, as we've seen in China, has completely entered a downward path. It's entering deflation. It's unlikely to recover. 
only by magnifying, politicizing, and fighting the conflicts among the people at the very bottom of the food chain can they shift the focus of people from the economic issues, political issues, to that of people's issues. So let the people consume each other in internal fighting and struggle uh, instead of in development. And the root cause of this Maple Bridge experience reappearing in the world is because economic construction has stopped and politi political construction must move forward. Now, sitting at the top of this, uh, the so-called struggle chain or food chain is Xi Jinping himself, and everybody below him has to engage in this level of class struggle. And right now, what we're seeing is technically considered to be peaceful time in the world or in China. But everyone knows that what just took place three years ago was the start of the draconian COVID lockdowns, and that itself is a political movement. It's a class struggle as well. And it's not a health and safety issue. So the same thing can rapidly take place in China again. Today, no one in China talks about the term class struggle, though. But in reality, Xi Jinping's dead set focus on national security is the replacement term for class struggle. And so anything can be considered a risk of national security, right? Whether that's dressing up weird or offensive or singing the wrong song, it's the same thing as the Cultural Revolution, but just with different terms. So anyone can be labeled as the new four kind, right? You have people, maybe the inevitable outcome of the Maple Bridge is that people play identity politics. Uh, you have groups of people labeled spies, traitors, foreign agents, or bad actors. And then they turn those people against their families or turn their families against them. And that, you know, neighbors against each other and so on. So it's a repeat of the early 60s where Mao had lost his credibility in the Communist Party because of the three-year famine, right? We're seeing a parallel here, three years of COVID. And then, of course, Mao had the great leap forward that led to it. So to gain, regain control within the party, Mao Zedong attempted to use people instead of government and uh, its officials as his power base. Subverting the system, the Maple Bridge experience is the perfect way to highlight how to fight the system from the bottom, which creates the security at the top. So the bottom fighting creates power that feeds into Xi's top position, aka using the mass to govern the elites. Now, while this may sound like a typical democratic system, right, it's actually not. It's more like a cult of personality. Because in the most recent meeting, Xi Jinping invited his top executioners to the photo op. He got on his right side here, the first ranked executioner, Tsai Chi. Uh, we've done an episode specifically on Tsai Chi, so I'll link it here. And then he's, of course, the currently the second most powerful guy in China. And on his left, he's got the head of the Central Disciplinary Inspection Committee, aka the ranked two uh, executioner. And then among them, you have the head of the Public Security, uh, which is police, and then head of the Central Political and Legal Affairs Commission. Now, what the heck is the Central Political and Legal Affairs Commission? Well, it's basically the party's top organ that oversees the Supreme Court, the police, and the Justice Department. And so this stack of people, right, has all of the executive authority to command the police, the spy agencies, the propaganda, state resources already. Yet they're now a part of this new Maple Bridge Experience cohort. Many online call this photo here the gathering of Xi's cleaver handles. So now that lineup looks nothing like a democracy to me. And so let's continue. Now, you might be wondering why. Why would Xi Jinping want a full-fledged people-based system where he... You know, when he already has an existing established control of everything from the government to the party. Well, one of the reasons is that to solidify his paramount status forever, he has to not rely solely on his position in party as well as in government, but rather in an elevated status as sort of a demigod-like being. Just like Mao Zedong, who at one point wasn't really holding a, an official head of state title, but was still considered the paramount chairman of China, which of course ended only when he died in 1976. So Xi Jinping is essentially centralizing all power of the political and legal dictatorship and then having the cleavers to do the dirty work for him, all under the context of for the people. Uh, and this is the essence and the characteristics of the Maple Bridge experience. So the model is here to expand and abuse uh, state law power and, as well as enforcement power. And then all of that is now under the control of people and organizations that do not simply have qualifications or even the abilities to govern. So this means that the power of the country's dictatorship has been strengthened and expanded. And it means that the country's law enforcement team has grown to now everybody can police everyone else, right? And there's no chain of command here except that everybody listens to Xi, whatever he says and whatever he says only. People are trapped in a perpetual self-struggle. In this state, there's a most fundamental idea here or a problem. It seems that one group is fighting another group. And that seems like they're doing sorts of... Um, between different groups fighting, but in fact, they're actually all fighting each other themselves. 
So it's really a close loop where the mass simply struggle, like they're in a um, animal farm and they're just fighting among each other, reaching a fever pitch. Only then the top management uh, steps in to lower the temperature and then act as the referees that they're gonna try to fight and pull away all the different parts of it. But in reality, everyone is within the grasp of the hand of the few. And there was a nice comment that I found online, which I thought perfectly suited the current state of China. So they were saying how the Ming Dynasty perished. Basically, the emperor did not believe in the civil and military officials, aka the government, so he established something called the Jin Yi Wei, or Royal Guards Corp. And then because he did not trust or believe in the Royal Guards Corp anymore, he established the Eastern Factory. And because he didn't believe in the Eastern factory anymore, he established the Western factory and so on. So you have layers upon layers of new things coming out, authorities over the existing ones. Eventually it collapsed. And uh, we can only hope the same thing happens here. All right, that's it today for the episode on what Xi Jinping is doing now, which is creating a Cultural Revolution-esque Maple Bridge experience. If you enjoy the content, leave a like, comment below your thoughts on this topic, and subscribe to our channel today. All right, until next time, I'm David Zhang. This is Tiny Insider. Bye-bye.